Labor's election winning lead. News poll has the ALP maintaining its gap on the coalition as the Prime Minister tells voters he will change his ways. I can be a bit of a bulldozer when it comes to issues. I know there are things that are going to have to change with the way I do things. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And with only five days till the election, the polls are pointing to what could be a clear Labor majority. But some of the diehards at News Corp, whose Sunday papers came out to endorse the coalition over the weekend, are still doing their best to turn the tide. As you can see from Friday's front page attacks on the Teal Independence in Sydney's Daily Telegraph and Melbourne's Herald Sun. You can run, but you can't hide. Teal conceal. They've got to hide. How these so-called independents conceal their agendas. Underneath those headlines, both the big city tabloids ran the same exclusive story from John Rolfe, which kicked off like this. High-profile independents trumpeting transparency have arrogantly refused to properly detail where they stand on issues affecting our nation, such as China's advance in the Pacific, changes to income tax, defence spending, transgender athletes and illegal boat arrivals. And inside there was more, with both papers running two-page spreads under this banner headline. The Arrogant Minority. A radical reality facing the nation. Now, this massive attack is supposed to be a news story, not an editorial or an opinion column. So it's breaking the golden rule of journalism that news and opinion should be kept separate. The story's language is anything but neutral, branding these candidates who threaten the libs as arrogant, so-called teal independents, silver spoon candidates who won't come clean. There's plenty of opinion there. And the key charge is ridiculous anyway because the independents make no attempt to hide their three key policies, action on climate change, a federal ICAC, and gender equality. Are they really hiding an agenda on China and tax? There's absolutely no evidence that they are. Meanwhile, in The Australian, in an earlier rant that was at least labelled commentary, Greg Sheridan warned readers, The most destructive, harmful and dangerous vote anyone can make in the forthcoming election is for a teal independent or the Greens. They are both a direct threat to our national security. The Teal Independents are not only populists, they are extremists. Meanwhile, on Sky After Dark, Paul Murray was also doing his best to stem the flood. Night after night after night. Viewers, as always, our focus remains the same, remains absolute. We have 12 days to save the country from the mad left. 11 days to save the country from the mad left. 10 days to save the country from the mad left. 9 days to save the country from the mad left. You get the picture, and even more so with the sound off, because the strap lines are straight from Liberal Party HQ, with Albo the villain who will economically destruct this nation, blow the budget, and commit economic vandalism. Paul Murray has never made a secret of barracking for the coalition, or Team Blue, as he calls it. Indeed, in an embarrassing hot mic moment in 2018, he admitted that Sky After Dark was a, quote, liberal echo chamber. But his partisan parroting made headlines again last week when The Guardian got its hands on a leaked tape. Sky News host Paul Murray in expletive-laden anti-Labour tirade to audience before Peter Dutton interview. To be honest, Murray's G up for a live Brisbane audience wasn't that different to what you get on air, except for the swearing. Now, Mark McGowan has a poodle like fucking Alba. <laughs> but maybe even he wouldn't say this about transgender swimmer Leah Thomas if he knew he was being recorded. A Sheila with a penis swam faster than a bunch of women without a penis who has a girlfriend with a vagina, but he is a lesbian. <laughs> Welcome to 2022, people. Welcome to 2022. Yes, it's Murray's mission to keep the woke at bay. And that is one he shares with lawyer Catherine Deves, the Liberal candidate fixated on transgender issues, who's trying to win back Tony Abbott's seat of Warringah and who made front page news in Friday's Sydney Morning Herald. Tearful Deves defends right to speak her mind. In many ways, Catherine Deves has been the soap opera of this campaign the leader of a cultural crusade that's never quite rallied voters to the flag, or so it seems. Stoutly defended by the PM who picked her, she's been criticised by moderate Liberals who fear her divisive views could lose them their seats. Since the campaign began, the Conservative media have been trying to cast her as a champion of women's sport, who is speaking up for silent Australians, with the telly giving her this front page. 
Dave's exclusive. They are all with me. And a small army of commentators on Sky have also championed her cause. You are one person who has stood up relentlessly and said, save our sports, save our girls, save our women. You're the ideal candidate for the Liberal Party. But it's not just women's sport that Dees has been whistling about, as we found out last month when Samantha Maiden broke this story on news.com.au. Catherine Deves has apologised for describing trans kids as surgically mutilated and sterilised. Ms Deves issued a public apology for the language after news.com.au revealed she had wiped her social media accounts, including posts that said she was triggered by the LGBT rainbow flag. And soon after that startling revelation, Sam Maiden offered several more. That Deves had compared trans activists to Nazis and sex offenders linked the trans community to serial killers, suggested gender dysphoria was misdiagnosed autism, and called a surrogate birth to gay US politician Pete Buttigieg a human rights violation. It was crazy stuff, but the PM was happy to defend her, at least against calls for her to stand down. She has stepped over the line and she's acknowledged that. But what I won't allow, what I won't allow, is for those who are seeking to cancel Catherine, simply because she has a different view to them on the issue of women and girls in sport, I'm not going to indulge that. And thus, a culture war was declared. And the media, who arguably had more important issues to chase, like affordable housing, fixing aged care or dealing with climate change, went running to the front line. Miss Deeds, just wondering if we could ask you a few questions. Rushing her to an elevator to escape the cameras. If you, if you win the seat, you're going to have to answer some questions, Miss Deves. Deves spent several days dodging the media in this fashion. And when she did stop for an interview, it was to cast herself as the victim. I'm meeting you in a secret location. You've removed yourself from your family and your house. Why is that? I have received death threats. I have had to have the police and the AFP involved. Uh, my safety has been threatened. That was three weeks ago, after which Deves went to ground again. But last week, the PM was defending her once more, and not just on women's sport. Have you spoken to her about the language? Have you spoken no, I haven't to had Catherine the opportunity Deves? to speak to her about what, what, what you speak to her, Prime Minister? Sorry? Will can't... you speak to her about what you've been saying? Oh, I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to talk. Can you body the correct terminology? Well, I'm not a surgeon, and so I will rely on the Chief Medical crazy. Officer. But why were Deves' views on transgender kids making news afresh? because Sky's Chris Kenny had tracked her down and she had walked back her original apology. Catherine, Hello. Chris Kenny, Chris. Hello. pleased to meet you. Thank we haven't you met seeing... in the flesh before. No, we haven't. Done Thank some interviews seeing... on the television but never met in the flesh. That's right. You've been pretty hard to catch up with. The Liberal Party doesn't seem to want us to do interviews with you. And you can perhaps see why, especially since Dee's told Kenny she stood by things she'd said. So you're not really apologising or stepping back from that language? Well, I'm apologising for how people might have perceived it. But were the Liberals really trying to muffle her? Not according to former Liberal Party staffer turned government critic Nikki Sather, who dropped this tidbit into her Sydney Morning Herald column. According to three New South Wales Liberal sources, Deves's campaign is now being run out of the Prime Minister's office. Deves's Sky interview recanting her apology was set up to resuscitate the issue, with the Prime Minister banking on getting asked about it at his press conference the next morning. Which is, of course, what happened. However, the PM's office has denied its running Deves' campaign and Kenny rejects any notion that he has been used as a prop. I found out on Monday where Catherine Deves was going to be at pre-poll and we got there and interviewed her on the footpath, as you saw. But the pathetic conspiracy theorists of the green left media spot another evil conservative plot. There is another theory, of course, that Deves' chat with Kenny and her tearful Herald front page was simply a candidate out of control. As Sam Maiden told RM Breakfast on Friday... Her campaign team have openly told journalists that they have a strategy of quote-unquote going rogue. And what that means is that they believe that they've been silenced early on by the Liberal Party HQ. And so her campaign team is actually encouraging journalists mm. to go down to Warringah and bounce her, and that's what's happening. One way or another, the headlines got out there. But is transgender sport a defining issue for Australians, as the PM asserts? Not according to a Guardian Essential poll, with voters ranking it in eighth place below cost of living, health, jobs 
and climate change. And not according to the ABC's David Spears, who told RM Breakfast... This is not a frontline issue amongst any of the voters that I've met wandering around marginal seats... No one's mentioned ..over it. the last five weeks. No one. Yet it seems to be a subject the Prime Minister wants to fight on. It was he who picked Dees for the job and knew how important the issue was for her. And he's been saying her views on trans kids and fairness in sport and her right to express them send an important message to voters. I think Australians are getting pretty, pretty fed up with having to walk on eggshells every day because they may or may not say something one day that's going to upset someone. But did the culture war ever get going? In the media, the answer is possibly yes, given questions like this to the leaders. How do you define a woman, Mr Albanese? An adult female. An adult female? Yeah. Mr Morrison? Yes, I'm adult, a member of the female sex. But did voters harangue politicians about it? Did it get them fired up? Not as far as we know, despite the media's and the PM's eagerness to have it centre stage. All in all, it was a strange diversion from the main battles in this campaign. But if the PM's culture war gamble did not come off, at least he's been having more luck with his photo ops, which, as always, the media have been lapping up. Filming him playing pastry chef in Townsville, a barista at a cafe in Sutherland, Sydney, and a seamstress in Western Sydney. We've also learned of the PM's passion for balls, from passing the footy to kicking the footy bending the knee at bowls and tossing the basketball. And what makes a successful photo op? One that blossoms into a friendly front page like this. More sugar for election sweetener. And what about Albanese's activities? For most of the campaign, he has stuck to wearing a high-vis vest, drinking coffee, holding babies and fronting the media pack, where last week he was asked this classic question. What do you think the rate of inflation will be in a year's time <laughs> under Labour? And if you thought that was silly, how about the one he copped the week before from Seven's Jennifer Beshwati? How is it appropriate for your member for Lions, Brian Mitchell, to tweet about um, if this debate doesn't wrap up soon, we're going to need mops, women don't do well holding on? Well, I, I, have, I haven't seen that tweet. When is it from? A few years ago, I think. When is it from? 2011. OK. And this question last week to the PM on day 32 of the campaign. Are you tired? You seem tired. I saw a frown earlier. <laughs> and secondly... <laughs> ah, but journalists are not just asking stupid questions. They are also going for some very silly stories. Like that favourite of every campaign, the psychic croc. That a local saltiest tip to win the federal election. Goliath the crocodile made his prediction today. This undecided voter took his time to pick Leichhardt's next federal member, but eventually made a snap decision. And who did he pick? After sizing up his prey, he crowned Warren Ench the winner. Yes, who needs dodgy polls when you have a crock of you-know-what like that? And if crocs aren't your thing, then let's look at these stars. We analysed each political candidate's star sign to see which one would make a better leader. Although Pedestrian did add this disclaimer. Do not use astrology to inform your decision when voting. But the silliness does not stop there. Here's some confected outrage on Seven Sunrise. Melbourne locals are not impressed with Anthony Albanese this morning after the Labor leader appeared to mispronounce Melbourne. Take a look. This project will transform the way that Melbournians can get around this city. Yes, Anthony Albanese said Melbournians instead of Melburnians. And the Daily Mail reported that residents were outraged. Well, that's it. I was going to vote for him, but that's a step too far. Absolute drivel, wrote one annoyed local online. In fact, the Daily Mail has been following Anthony Albanese's campaign closely, with big stories like the yawning baby on his lap, him talking for two minutes about his old job in a pancake shop, and did you catch their scoop about the muffin? Bizarre moment, Labour leader refuses to eat a muffin at campaign event before talking about them three times. But you know, the election campaign really is bizarre when this happens at a prime ministerial event. So thank you very much all for coming, for supporting this great 
great candidate for for the area. Excuse me, who are you? Well, I am. I'm Kim Jong. Come on, it's pretty yeah. obvious. Hard to beat that, but there is still five days to go. That's all from us for tonight. There's more on our website where you can stream or download the programme. And don't forget Media Bites every Thursday. But for now, until next week, goodbye.